All right, let's jump into the second part of this session. We're going to talk about what we can do now with our computer or peripheral devices connected to the box light panel. So over here, we talked about the input button. I'm going to go hit that and you'll see all the available things I can now connect to. One of them is PC. That PC, the one that's labeled PC, is the one that's actually built into your panel. It's on the side, it slides right in, it is a full-fledged Windows 10 PC. So we're going to switch to that real quick. I think that's what's going to be the most handy to use. There's no cables, there's nothing that can come disconnected because it's sl it slides right into the side. And we're going to do that and whenever you see it launch, it's going to come right up. It'll give you your kind of Windows screen that you're used to seeing. And you may wonder, how do I log in? Well, the trick is, you just slide up. Okay, be intentional about it. Don't go crazy on it, just slide up. All right, once you get there, you'll type in your password, my password for this panel, and you'll have your own. Is that. It'll give you a little welcome, it'll load, and now I have full functionality of my entire computer uh, right here on the panel. So a few things to talk about. How do I navigate a panel now without a keyboard, and without a mouse? Well, the easiest thing to do is to plug in a keyboard and a mouse, which you can do. So you can see over here, uh, for this teacher, we've actually gone ahead and put a keyboard in here and a mouse, and we've just plugged in right into the side of the panel. You can use a wireless keyboard, a wireless mouse. Those may be things that you want to go ahead and invest in, or if you have an extra keyboard laying around, it does make it easier. But that being said, I can still do every single thing I need to be able to do on this panel without a mouse or a keyboard, okay? So basic functions, clicking is just gonna be touching. So if I need to open a program or open the internet, I'm gonna double click, just like I would with my mouse, All right? If it's if it misses and you, get, you don't get the rhythm just right, you might need to right click on it and tell it to open. If you need to right click, that's done by pressing and holding. You'll see a little box develop as soon as you let go. It's the exact same as if you just right clicked. So sometimes I have found that if I tap too quickly or maybe my taps weren't in the exact same place because I'm not used to using my finger, I've, I've used a mouse for so long, if I press and hold, I can go to open, and that's a guaranteed way to know that it's not the computer being slow, it's, it's that I didn't actually uh, open it, and this time I know it's going to work. All right? So now I've got Google open. I need to be able to type in something, right? So if I go over here and I type, notice that nothing happens. Where's my giant keyboard? Where's my touch keyboard? Well, I'll show you in a second, but for a lot of y'all, it might be easiest to use that. Especially I have a long URL, I need to type in something like Mimeo Connect, which is where we're going to go to get lessons. I just did that in, I'm a fast typer, so like a second. But uh, that would have taken me a while on the on-screen keyboard. However, if I do need to use the on-screen keyboard, here's how you do it. Down here at the very bottom of Windows 10, there's a black bar. And if you press and hold, which is right clicking, I get some options. All right, one of them, notice, is show touch keyboard button. Muy importante. All right, we need to have that working to get the functionality we want to on this panel. So very first step, as soon as you all fire up and get logged into Windows, this should be the very first thing you do is go down here, hold, which is the same as right clicking, go up here, show touch keyboard button. Notice a little tiny icon just appeared on the bottom right. So now when I go over here and I want to search for a ping one, I now have my little keyboard, right? This is just a function of Windows. It has nothing to do with Boxlight. It has nothing to do with Mimeo Studio. This is a function of your Windows 10 computer, okay? And I'm really going to emphasize things throughout this little part of the training. There is almost nothing that I'm showing you that you can't just do on your computer. And if the question ever becomes, hey, can I do this on my box light or can I do that on my box light? My question to you back will be, well, can you do it on your computer? If there's a great website you love to go to with interactive activities or worksheets or whatever it is, you say, well, will it work on my box light? The answer is yes, if it works on your computer. So uh, it is just at this point being a display for computer, and touch is just being the mouse, okay? 
You'll also see that with my little keyboard, I do have some options. I know it's getting absolutely teensy weensy tiny over here, but if I press that, I can choose between a floating keyboard or one that's locked to the bottom. It might be easier to have a floating one, but sometimes the floating one can kind of get lost. You'll be like, wait, where, where is it? I've got this giant screen, I'm looking for stuff. I usually like to kind of keep it uh, tied to the bottom, okay? <coughs> I mentioned earlier, pinching and zooming. Pinching and zooming is just a function of your browser, all right? Not everything will pinch and zoom. If I try to pinch and zoom this screen, nothing happens. Different applications allow the pinching and zooming function. Again, it's not box light. It's the computer deciding what is going to be able to do it. So going back to that, I want to go ahead and close this. Let's go ahead and back, back to this. Is this going to be pinch and zoom? Well, the fact that it's in Chrome means probably it is. There's very few things in Chrome that are not pinch and zoom friendly. So if you feel like this panel isn't big enough for any reason, know that if you need to make the text bigger for that kid in the back of the class who can't see, uh, you can always pinch and zoom anything from your Chrome browser, uh, usually from any internet browser, you can actually have that functionality, okay? We're going to spend some time on Mimeo Studio Notebook, which is a great application for uh, whiteboarding, bringing lessons, interactive activities. Um, but before we la launch into that, I kind of want to show you some different ways that you can do that if you don't have the time to learn Mimeo Studio. Some of y'all have things that y'all are comfortable with, and maybe right now isn't the best time to have to learn a whole new piece of software. So what I want to just show you is that this panel is non-proprietary, it's software agnostic, it works with everything, it doesn't care what it is. Case in point, if I go to PowerPoint, which right here, you'll notice, if I'm comfortable using PowerPoint here, I can go ahead, accept, start using PowerPoint. I've got annotation tools built into PowerPoint, okay? If I need to use my Google Drive, I can launch Google. I can open up uh, Google Slides. I can open up Google Sheets, Jamboard, all the different things that are built into Google in here. You go log into that, right? So anything that you can imagine that can be done through the internet uh, or through another application, as long as it requires a mouse, well, now my finger is the mouse, okay? Um, let's see, other little things built into the panel would also include this nifty guy. Windows 10 actually gives you a little annotation tool built in. You'll notice that when I right-clicked over here to get my keyboard, there was also one called Show Windows Ink Workspace button. All right, when I check that, it gives me a little pin with a squiggle behind it. I can go ahead and launch that and do a full screen snip of anything at any point and then be able to write over it, right? Yay, oh wait, let's see. I have to tell it to be a touch, okay? So that's not even using the built-in Android functions. That's not using Mimeo Studio. Right now, I haven't used anything that is proprietary to Boxlight, but I'm still able to do quite a bit. It's so whatever fits your comfort level and your knowledge base on whatever software platform you're using, okay? Um, I think that about covers it for the computer side as far as basic functions, all right? Now, let's talk about Mimeo Studio. First thing I want you all to remember are places to get resources. So before I even launch into this, if you're like, okay, I'm not going to kind of have time to pay attention to this, but I do want to get resources later. Let me show you some things, that I, some places to go after this video is over so that you can uh, still continue to learn. The first one is going to be mimeo.boxlight.com.videotutorials. Right? In fact, I'll make this really big so maybe you can see it on your screen. Mimeo.boxlight.com forward slash video dash tutorials. I know it's a long thing, but if you go to boxlight.com, uh, look under resources, you'll find video tutorials. I love this. This is how I learned everything I know about Mimeo Studio. This will go through two minute, three minute long videos, one after another, based on just the thing that you want to learn. If we get done today and you can't remember, what did Michael say? Uh, for how do I do a screen capture in Mimeo Studio? What did Michael say about how to change the color of the, of the tool palette? Uh, that kind of thing. 
go here, you'll find a short little video on just that little thing that you need to know, and that way you won't have to sit through another hour-long video, okay? The other important one for you to know about is this one. And this actually changed. Oops, I'm a pen. This changed recently. It used to be just MimeoConnect.com. Now it is search.mimeoconnect.com. This is a place where you can go and get lots of pre-made lessons. So again, maybe I just want to use Mimeo Studio as a place to bring in other people's hard work because I don't really have the time right now to sit here and learn and create a bunch of lessons. This is a great place, uh, thousands of lessons online by grade level, by subject that you can search for and find things that are applicable to your grade level, your subject. Um, some of them will even have, uh, it'll show whether their teeks aligned or not. So very useful resource, okay? So that being said, let me go back now to the computer and let's go ahead and launch Mimeo Studio Notebook. You're going to notice you have three, three applications that are associated with Mimeo Studio, okay? Go away. Um, these three applications include the gradebook, the tools, and the notebook. Today, we're not going to talk about the gradebook or the tools. We're going to talk about the notebook. In fact, tools is kind of something that's linked to notebook. It's going to auto launch whenever I do it anyways. If you later on want to be able to learn more about gradebook and how to actually integrate all these activities that we might have our kids doing to import directly into a gradebook that can be copy and pasted into your gradebook, uh, there may be some paperless grading that we can do that happens instantaneously in the classroom. Uh, it is a little bit more set up though into, for today's basic training. We're just going to focus on this. So purple icon, I'm going to double click on it. You'll see it's going to launch Mimeo Studio. Uh, if you don't, if it says something about activating, uh, contact IT, we'll get you an activation code. Uh, but it should launch into this. And you should have a nice white blank slate with your floating toolbar, which again, this is the tools application. If I had just wanted to launch only the toolbar, I would have hit Mimeo Studio Tools and only this would have happened, okay? But I want the full on notebook <coughs> and I'm gonna go ahead and open it. So there we go. Should be very basic. Hopefully, I don't need to spend a whole lot of time on this. Uh, I'd rather spend this time showing you the capabilities of it than going through every single detail of it. But you'll notice I have a pen, a highlighter. I've got erase all ink. You'll notice I have multiple points of touch. That is going to be something specific to Mimeo Studio. Right now, if I were to open that Windows Ink workspace that's com that comes built in, I only get one point of touch. It's still handy, but if I want all the points of touch, then I do want to be in Mimeo Studio, or remember, I can also use the whiteboard that's built in, okay? <coughs> um, I also have things like I can bring in math formulas. I can get really complicated. I can get really advanced. I can bring in files, or I can even bring in screen clippings. So here's a way where if I needed to draw a weird shape and grab certain things, I can do that, all right? So some different capabilities that you have in Mimeo Studio that I didn't have just over here on the whiteboard, all right? Down here, I have some really powerful tools also. One of them looks like a little flower with a frame around it. It's gonna be my gallery. It's gonna launch the gallery over here on the side and it's, a, it's just a giant library of pre-made images, templates, and multimedia. And it's by category. So if I wanted to find something specific, like, this is really small. I need my mouse. Come here, buddy. It's not giving me much room. You can't, probably can't see that, but I have art, geography, music, travel, all these different things. And if I click on one, like science, then I can look at all the images, templates, and multimedia associated with science. So I have different molecule structures. I've got all my different animals for biology. You'll notice I'm doing all this just with my mouse right now, and there's no wrong way to do this. A lot of things in Mimeo Studio are much easier to do at your computer or with a mouse to kind of build a lesson and then let the kids actually use their hands or the uh, 
styluses for the actual running of the activity. Tons of different stuff over here, pistachios. What I love about this gallery is that I could have just gone to Google and I could have saved that image, but that would have taken me a few steps. I would have had to decide, if I'm, am I saving the image somewhere? Am I going to have to uh, create a folder to put it in there? Uh, is it going to have a background? A lot of times when I find an image off the internet, it comes with a, a background and maybe I want it to be one that there is no background. So this is going to be a high quality image and I, I can make really big. Remember, I don't have to go, like I talked in the last video, making sure that image is at high definition from Google so it doesn't look like junk when I make it really big on this giant 65 inch screen. The gallery is a great place to find all kinds of things, different grade levels, different things that we can talk about. Okay. So that again is that little button right here. I'm going to go ahead and create a new page just to kind of get all that out of the way. And the other button you'll see here is your tools. I have things that are kind of redundant. Remember, I can get my spotlight over here this way, but I can also have a spotlight built into the computer. So this gives me that same kind of functionality, a lot of the same kind of tools you see redundantly, but they have another one called Reveal right above Spotlight. And this is something that allows you, especially for reading, to kind of keep everyone on the same track. So we're going to stay together. I don't want anybody getting ahead. If I need to block out a certain part of the board, I have that little Reveal there in the tools. Okay. Also an important one of the tools is I do have a recorder. So however you guys want to capture different things, there are so many applications out there. You're probably getting bombarded with a hundred different ways to do the same thing. But know that if I hit the little recorder button on here, it will let me record the session as soon as I hit that red button. So I, it captures everything on the screen. If you have an audio input coming in, it's going to capture that audio input. And it's a, it's a tool that you can use now to, if I need to do everything on the board and record it, save it as a file and send it to students at home, that is built into Mimeo Studio through this little tools, straight to the little camcorder icon and hit recorder. Okay? So, without going into everything that this thing does, uh, because that's why I showed you the video link earlier, um, let me show you a few cool things. If I need to build an activity really fast, there's some ones where I can do a, a new uh, interactive activity. And I'll show you again how I did that. This is my create a new slide. Right next to it is one that looks similar but slightly different that also has a plus sign with a few little white squares. That's my activity builder. So yeah, it's kind of clumped, it's kind of hard to see, but I'm going to choose science, third through fifth, four column chart. And my resolution is just a little funky right now. A little bit funky to make it work so I can show you guys. Because it put my button way down at the bottom. And I don't know why, but it did. Here. Let me see if I can do it. <laughs> I can barely see it. Yes. All right, so I can select the topic, animal habitats, desert, forest, grassland, rainforest. Sound good? Hopefully yours won't quite get as low as this one. It's going to automatically populate it with different animals. I'm going to hit next two more times, and bam, I have an activity. And yeah, we're having resolution issues. Definitely this is something to know about. The resolution thing can sometimes uh, mess with how these images work in the activity builder. So uh, be kind of aware of that, practice it. It may be something we have to go into the display settings and actually change the resolution to get that to work. But we won't spend too much time on that now. I do think this is a fantastic thing. Here, let's see. I like 1360. And without creating a whole nother deal, let's see if that worked a little bit better. Oh my gosh, it got crazy. Can we just edit this part out? <laughs> yeah. Because that is just not what I want people to spend any time on. Yeah. If anything, I'm just going to confuse the heck out of people right now. All right, let's go back to <laughs> finding that cut point is going to be lots of fun. Let's go back to the highest one. I have only seen that a few times, Richard. 
so I don't know why it just happened. Of course, it's going to happen right during the training. But there are, that is a super cool thing when it works, but it's, I've seen it sometimes struggle if the computer resolution isn't matched. So what, what is the resolution for those? The default resolution, though, which is I guess that's what we need. I'd have, to, I'd have to call the guy from Boxlight who I was on the phone with earlier and see what he recommends, because this is the newest version of Mimeo Studio. It used to be the 1366 by 78 was what was perfect for that particular function to work. And now, I mean, everything's 4K. <coughs> we want the highest resolution, but OK. Yeah, just start where you want, and we'll cut that out. OK, so we're going to go over some really uh, cool functions of this without going into quite so much detail. So let me show you a few other things. Uh, I have a flash drive right over here in this side of the panel. I've got a bunch of different kind of files on it and activities that I've already gotten off of the Mimeo Connect site. So remember that search.mimeoconnect.com. Go there, you can find a whole bunch of things. You can also, if you have old smart notebook files, dot notebook files, or dot flip chart files, feel free to throw those on a thumb drive or just get them over here onto your panel through the cloud somehow. And I'll show you how useful this is to have Mimeo Studio as just a platform for using other people's work. Let them do the work for you, right? So I've got my flash drive in. I'm going to go ahead and open my file folder over here and find some different kinds of files for you. So under box light training, I've already kind of handpicked a few that I think are cool and that are applicable across uh, multiple uh, grade levels and subjects. Quick and easy one right off the bat is Connect 4. If I want to have a game that's interactive, getting kids up to the board, I can launch this. I have two teams. You'll notice that I can click here for questions. And I can, it doesn't matter what subject I'm teaching, I can go ahead and create each one of these. If I want to see the slides, uh, I change that in the view. I can go over to question number two. I can do this ahead of time, have it be uh, how many sides are there on an octagon, right? Then whoever answers quickest gets to go back to the game board over here, and they get to drag a little checker for their team, right? It's a fun way to take literally any subject, any unit you're working on, and just go ahead and build that. It takes a little bit of work ahead of time. Just go ahead and create and populate all these different questions. But I can reuse this in a 100 different ways for any grade level that there is, right? So that's a great example of one that I just love. It's out there. Someone else already made it. I'll give you an example of another one. And what's interesting about this one is a dot notebook file. So this is a smart notebook file. This is not a Mimeo file. Mimeo notebook will open it, though. Uh, it's compatible with all those different file types. There we go. So it's going to load. What I'm going to show you on this one is how big of a file this is. So let me go to view. I want to show you over here. Guys, this is, that's 104 slides. Someone did this work <laughs> for you. Uh, you can do this yourself, but why would I teach you how to do this yourself whenever you can just go get it? All right? So here's a game that you can have your kids play about US state capitals. All right? So I click it. My students can come up here. They can pick any state. They can pick Texas. What is the name of this state's capital? Click here to see if you're right. So they answer, Austin. And then they get to see the answer, capital. And there's the flag. And it should be right there. Oh, so they have a hyperlink. Takes me to Texas Online, not portable. I mean, there's all these interesting things that, they, that someone else built into this. It should actually say Austin right there. Let's try California. Capital Sacramento. There it is. So it shows it up there. There may be some weird formatting things sometimes that happen whenever you take a smart file and turn it into a Mimeo notebook file. All right? So that's a great activity someone else already did all the work for. Let me show you another fun one. Let me find you Whack-A-Mole. Do I have Whack-A-Mole? Oh, I don't think I have it. Uh, there's even ones on here where you can actually have like moles faces and you have the kids throw things at the board and it toggles a question for a quiz. 
Look for whack-a-mole. It's a fun one that is out there. I think Promethean has some that have, uh, they've made whack-a-mole, Smart's made them, Mimeo's made whack-a-mole. Go search for those kinds of fun activities. Now here's another great example of just the different kinds of ones. Fire safety. Something we go over every year with the kids, right? This built in a number of different techniques. And so as you are learning this and trying to decide if you want to invest the time to see all the different things you can do on Mimeo Studio, think about all the different ways I can teach using this. So I'm going to give you some examples. This little fire safety things uh, shows a few different examples of things that are interactive. They're always going to usually have a little button that gives you an answer key and another button that gives you the question. So objective, students will identify items that are dangerous and safe by dragging the pictures to the correct areas. All right? So you put these all in a little bank, and then the students can decide if they're dangerous, safe, whatever they are. In fact, I'm not going to even take the time to look at what I'm doing. I think a fire hydrant probably is pretty safe. Okay. Uh, the next little slide I can go to is true or false. So these are true or false questions where they simply put an image over each one of either a check mark or an, check mark or an X, and they put a hyperlink telling it, once you touch it, we want you to animate fade in. That's all they did. So this is an example of how I can come up here, my answer, it's going to instantly tell me if I'm correct or if I'm wrong. And I can go through and do all that. Again, this is about fire safety, but could this be about literally anything? Could I steal this? Could I totally copy and paste, or sorry, highlight and delete all of this, type in my own stuff, and now I've got a true and false template ready to go for whatever subject, subject I'm teaching. Fire safety riddles. Here's another fun thing they did. This black bar has the answers in it, and it but they've written words in black. So it's like black on black, I can't see it. It's like a hidden box. So when I slide this over here, it reveals the answer. So this is the same exact thing. I could take this template. Maybe I'm teaching biology, or maybe I'm teaching you know, second grade math. I can have my answers linked to that, and I can make this my own. <coughs> All right? So lots of really clever ways to use Mimeo Studio. And I think, was there one more really good one? Connect for. Martin Luther King, this was a good lesson where they showed how you can link, do you use, use hyperlinks. Uh, so if I want to have a video embedded, I can do that. All right, so here's again, you're going to notice these little things a question. What's the objective? Use the stylus to select the picture of Martin Luther King Jr. In the, na in the middle of the page and view the video that is linked. Boom, launches a video. So this is something I could have just done in PowerPoint, but I can have it all in Mimeo Studio and have other features like this. Martin Luther, Martin Luther King Jr. was born in Atlanta, Georgia in blank. So now I get to come up with my pen tool. I don't know the answer to this. I know it's going to be 19 something, right? And I can actually have them go up to the board and write on it. Factor opinion. Martin Luther King Jr. delivered his I Have a Dream speech at the Lincoln Memorial on August 28, 1963. Is that a fact or is that an opinion? I think it's a fact, right? So it's actually going to show me, oops, I have to be the selector. It's going to show me the answer. This statement is not disputable, uh, so it is a fact. All right. All these little fun animations and things are, again, things that you can steal. All of this is editable. Every bit of this is editable. Another factor of opinion. All right. And some different things like that, where I can ask a question or an objective, and then I can see the answers, fact, opinion, fact, opinion, all right? So feel free to use those. <coughs> I will say that the other thing I love about this is that in that gallery we talked about a little bit earlier, there's things called gallery packs. So if you go to search.mimeoconnect.com, like we talked about earlier, that link, you'll notice that there is one called imported content packs. I can actually drag in something about Halloween, because there's a Halloween content pack, and make it my own. Again, I know it seems like sometimes there are little kiddish things, like little pumpkins and bats. But I promise, I can find a way to use that for ninth grade if I need to. Uh, there's all these different content packs. And feel free to download those on that website as well.
All right. So let's go back to here. These are the main things that I want you guys to take away from this. If you want those uh, content packs, if you want those lessons, search.mimeoconnect.com. If you need additional instruction about using Mimeo Studio in particular, go to mimeo.boxlight.com slash video tutorials, and they're going to do a great job of giving you short little videos to watch. I hope this has been informative. I hope that you guys have fun with this and take the time to just dig in because you can't break it. The more you use it, the more you practice, the better you'll get. Thanks.